Something else here, Josh. I'm getting another hit. Oh, there! Right there! Is that... Is that a coin? Holy f Look at this! I'm in the middle of Lake Superior, diving dangerous waters for the wrecks of two World War I minesweepers. So far, so good. Wait, something is definitely down here. It's a rock! It's a big rock! Are you kidding me? Are you seeing, is there metal or is it just wood? It's all metal, Tom. Could be one of the minesweepers. Looks like it's been down here a long time. The debris field spreads out all over the bottom. Wow. Pretty busted up. For sure. No doubt whatsoever, this went down in a storm. It's torn to pieces. There are hundreds of steel beams down here. Can't tell if it's structural or cargo. Any sign of uh, any guns at all? There should be one on the stern and one on the bow. I'm not seeing guns on the stern. <sighs> Heading over to the bow. The ship is just massive. It goes on forever. Some machinery ahead. I can see old gears here. I think this is part of the engine. I can see what looks like an anchor resting on the bottom. It still works. This thing isn't going anywhere. You know, of course, we're looking for something that's 140 feet long. The wreck's in pieces. Tough to tell how long it is. I'm going to try to make my way to the end of this. Oh, my lord. Look at these boilers. They're the size of a bus. That sounds incredible. Okay, I'm reaching the bow of the ship. No guns. No gun mounts. And the physical profile doesn't quite match. I don't think this is a minesweeper, Tom. Might be from the same period with those steam boilers, but it's even bigger. Whatever it is, though, it is absolutely awesome. Josh, why don't you head back up? We'll see if we can figure out what ship this is. Okay, coming back to you now. With the Rex coordinates recorded, I return to the surface to review with Tom. Woo! Oh man, what a wreck. Absolutely beautiful. Not our minesweeper, yeah. but a beauty of a wreck. Massive boilers, machinery everywhere. I mean, just stunning. Wow, beautiful. Absolutely stunning wreck. Well, if it would have been the minesweepers, you would have seen those big guns. Yeah. You know what, man? Those minesweepers are out here, though. Yeah. Don't stop looking for them. No, we won't. I'm not going to give up. Good. Nothing's going to hide from that sonar That's forever. That's right. You'll find them. Yes. You want to get warm? Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's do this. The next day, I returned to the mainland, still buzzing with excitement at having dived on such a magnificent shipwreck. Tom's research uncovers that the boat we dived on is a seldom seen vessel recorded by the Great Lakes Shipwreck Society. It is the Chicago, a 325-foot package freighter that became stranded on the rocks off Michipicoten in October of 1929, and then slipped into deeper waters where she broke apart. Due to its remote location, the Chicago has been visited by very few divers, a sadly faded chapter from the long, tragic maritime history of the greatest Great Lake. Largely forgotten, until now. Whoa, right there! That's a coin! Rob, look at this! That's a beauty! Oh. Wow, we are on a boat! Unbelievable! I just don't believe it, this is just fantastic! Is that Latin? That's Latin. The size of that, I'd say, that could be an English crown. Solid silver. Unbelievable! Amazing! We're hoping the English crown means that we're on top of a larger find. With only a few minutes of slack tide left, we continue to blow down into the sand and to frantically metal detect the bottom.
Nothing over here. Something else here, Josh. I'm getting another hit. Oh, there! Right there! Is that... Is that a coin? Holy <laughs> Look at this! It's a coin, and I'll tell you, it's not from here. This is what we're looking for. Let me see! Here. Looks like Arabic! Yes! Nice work! Yes! Unbelievable! Look at that! It's what a coin! A coin. This is special. We've just unearthed an Arabic coin, similar to the one Rob and Don found on their first dive here. It is a major find because Avery's big score was the Ganja Sawai, which was laden with treasure from Arabia. I'm gonna bag it and let's look at it on the boat. You got it. Nice find. Beauty. The Arabic coin is a mind-blowing discovery. Unfortunately, it's the last thing we're going to find today. Josh, do you feel that surge? I do, it's getting rough down here. It's not gonna be safe to be in here, mate. Yeah, for sure, that surge is getting worse. Let's head to the boat, we'll regroup. Right, let's all head to the boat now, everyone up. The slack tide is ending, and the current begins to pull us out to sea. We quickly surface and climb back aboard the boat to get a closer look at our hull. Let's start with that big coin. I'm not sure what it looks to me. It's a cross, we have a it's cross? A cross with the four shields as well. Yes, this is English, yeah. yes? Yeah. And this is who? This is... Uh, that would be William the Third. William the Third. there's yeah. a three right there. This puts us in the period, that yes? That puts us right bang smack in the period. Couldn't be better. And look at this, look at the condition of it. Well, just nice, sitting it? down there. It's solid silver, so it's just clean as when it was minted. Yeah. Worn, but clean. Yeah, it's just amazing. God, that is unbelievable. Men, this is a die, right? This, yeah. Well, I wasn't sure at first. Cause right, because it, it looks like a musket ball. Yeah, I you just can well. see the little pinpricks in it. It's just amazing because I believe that gambling was actually banned on pirate ships. Looking at the shape of it, I said it was probably a musket ball and then they've just flattened it on the sides. So right. That would make sense. It's unbelievable. And, and then this coin. This, this was, I thought, the showstopper. This is just amazing. This is Arabic script here, it yes? Is, isn't it? Yeah. This is definitely Mughal. There's no two ways about it. This is that a Mughal is, coin? That is a Mughal coin. This is as close to a smoking gun that is. as we've seen. And tied in with those other coins is cast iron proof that that has got to be off of one of the Avery ships. Certainly this Mughal Empire was huge. They were controlling a lot of trade, but taken with the, the musket balls and the cannons and the other coinage from the right period, it's hard to imagine this isn't part of the Henry Avery story. So, now what? Well, now we have to continue magging that area and we need to find the rest of that vessel. Well, according to history, there's about $100 million worth of it sitting out there. That would be nice. <laughs> be really nice. This may be just the beginning. Let's just hope so. Nice You've work, done it. brother. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Awesome job. Nice absolutely one, Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Look at that. Is this the resting place of Henry Avery's last ship? It just may be. The necessary elements seem to be here. Now, it's up to Rob and Don to find the final pieces of the puzzle. History tells us that Captain Henry Avery was a vicious man who thrived in a violent era. But in the 17th century, as today, even the most heinous of crimes could be mistaken for entertainment. Far from repulsing his peers, the tales of Henry Avery's exploits inspired them, ushering in what we now think of as the Age of Pirates. Security officer Ryan is an experienced diver, so he'll be joining us in the tomb. The ambassador, ever the public servant, is eager to help as well, gamely volunteering to haul heavy waterlogged buckets up to the sifting tent. Our mission on day two is simple. Excavate Nastasin's burial chamber, collect samples from his sarcophagus, and hopefully find some remains of a king. All right, gents, are we ready? Ready as we're gonna be. Good hunting down there. Now that I've been to Meroway, my mental picture of the tomb is strong enough for me to orient myself. Still, in zero visibility, it's hard to stay that way. Okay, I feel metal, so this is the edge of the shoe. 
I can feel that I'm in the chute now. And I'm making my way through. Dive team, this is Dave. How's the water? Oh, it's a murky, zero visibility, but it's a nice day at the beach. Yeah, it's pretty much a blackout in here. Okay, I am into the first chamber, looking for the guide wire now. Okay, going through, making my way to the second chamber. I carefully enter the collapsed second chamber of Nastasin's tomb. Somewhere ahead of me is a partially submerged block, marking the area I'll need to swim to reach the safety of an air pocket. To find it, I'm going to have to release the guide cable and take that leap of faith. Okay, I'm letting go. Moving forward. I am not feeling that block this time. That block is gone. I'm, I'm gonna turn around and try to reacquire the line. All right, I am headed into the chute. Dive team, this is topside. No copy. This is Josh, I read you loud and clear, topside. Confirmed, I hear you. I got a little bit of visibility in here today. It's not great, but it's better than usual. Oh, that's surprising. Make the most of it. All right, Jets, good luck. Stay safe. So I'm through the chute, it looks like. I'm sweeping up to find the cave line. I have it in my hand. I am making my way through chamber one. I can see your light. You're coming in the right direction. Okay, great. Moving Come. forward. Go another body length, and then you can come up and surface. Okay, hold on. And I'm coming in, and I'm coming up. Surface. We have two minutes left, two minutes left. I'm headed back out through chamber one. We return to the surface with the last set of buckets before our air runs out. It's time to see if we hauled anything out of there other than sand. Oh my god, we got something here. More gold leaf? Oh, what is that? Wait, what is this? That is not gold leaf. It's like thimble shaped? Yeah. What is this? I think I know exactly what this is. This would have been one of the finger or toe caps of the king that they put on him when they buried him. Wait, this is a finger or toe cap that was on the king? Yeah, it's pretty great. This is insane. This item may look small, but make no mistake, this appears to be a monumental find we may have our first confirmation that the king has not left the building. This has to have been on him, right? There's no question. There's, there's no other way this gets in there. Modern Garachico is a quaint fishing town, but in its heyday, this was the crossroads of world trade. The question is, could part of Pargo's fortune be waiting out in the water? Reefs made of hardened lava make it impossible for us to motor in all the way. Fortunately, Cesar knows a shortcut. Okay, okay Josh, Josh no, we're Come headed down. Abajo, Follow me. Okay, I'm right behind you. Josh? Do you read me? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. We are approaching the bottom. How's the visibility? Visibility is strong, at least 20 feet. The topography is wild down here. All right, Cesar, where are we headed? Just keep me. following me. There's going to be a bit of a drop off here. Holy shit! That's a cliff! Okay, over the edge. Heading deeper. Darkness ahead. Cesar, what is this? Is that a cave? No, it's not a cave. It's a lava tube, Josh. This is all lava. This is actually part of the lava flow that's hardened into rock. Yes, this is all from the volcano. It connects to the harbor and our discovery. Follow me. Unbelievable. What we're seeing here is how islands get made. This is like primal geology. Okay, headed in. 
Top side, we may lose contact. We'll pick you up on the other side. We activate our lights to enter the tube, a passage created in 1706 during the massive eruption. Oh my lord, look at this place. See, yes, this is part of a lot of event. So these are like natural passages where lava creates a kind of crust on the edges for material to flow through. When they empty out, we're left with this. We cautiously swim through the passage, and soon we're in complete darkness. This is intense. There's no air pockets above. And it's not just a lava tube. It looks like a series of passages that branch off. Very easy to get lost in places like this. Extremely dangerous. We're almost through, Josh, but it's going to get pretty narrow before it spits us out. Perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping to hear. I see it. Is this our exit? That's it, Josh. Squeezing through a break in the lava tube, we push through the gloom and emerge back into the light of day inside the reefs. Ricardo, do you read me? Now I read you. Are you okay? We're okay, yeah. Coming out of the lava tube back into the harbor. Okay. And keep your eyes open down there. Okay, okay Josh. Josh. We've made it. it. Here's what I wanted to show you. Take a look over there. Copy that. I'm right behind you. Right here, Josh. Have a look at this. Oh, man! It's an anchor! Yes, it's an anchor. Wow! How old is this? It Muy is viejo. very old. Hundreds of years old. From the time of the eruption. Yes, we think this is from when the ship sank here. This is a big find in every sense. The anchor is huge. Whatever ship it was mooring would have been huge too. A massive ship with a massive cargo. So no question, this is the right place. This is the old harbor. And Pargo's ships must have been anchored somewhere in this zone. Let's take the metal detectors and have a look. What the heck are these? Cesar, I have something! Holy Cesar, I have something here! Okay, Hold on, Josh. Me, I'm on my way. Off the coast of Tenerife is an old port where the pirate Amaro Pargo's ships sank during a historic volcanic eruption. Now, we may have just discovered where. These are ceramic rings, yeah? Tons of them! Are these from some kind of storage vessels? Yes, these are amphora. The remains of many amphora here. So this is from the lid? Correct. This will be the very top of the amphora. Amphora are vessels with a wide base and narrow neck that have been used since the days of ancient Greece. The design allows many of them to be stowed in small spaces, like, say, the cargo hold of a treasure ship. What would these have been used for? For wine? Wine was the most common, but they could have also held oil. Incredible! There are dozens of them right in this area. These could be tied to Pargo, maybe wine from his vineyard. The amphora are worth celebrating. The discovery of artifacts from Pargo's very specific time and place. Fresh out of Top Gun references, we cruise almost an hour out onto the Pacific to Brett's target, where we gear up and drop in. And that water is brisk. Sure is. Good news is we're right above the target. We need to follow the shot line down, and the object should be right there. Heading down now. 
The bad news is that there's a strong current here and these waters are a known great white shark breeding area, which I guess I'd feel slightly better about if I could see them. Passing 20 feet and visibility is just dropping off a cliff, having a hard time seeing anything. This is quickly turning into a dangerous dive. If we lose this guideline, we could be carried by the current far away from our boat. Not to mention we're descending on a blind collision course with an object that could be anything. Passing 50 feet, we should be near the bottom. I'm there. It's dark. It's like zero visibility down here. I'm feeling around near the line. I'm going to see if there's anything in the sand. Okay, I'm doing the same. Some of the worst conditions I've ever seen. It is just so murky. Ow! What happened? I just ran into something with my face. Are you okay? I think so, yeah. My mask and regulator's good. Question is, what did I hit? I don't know. Can you feel it? It's solid. Rusted and sharp. Brett, this is definitely metal. It's pretty encrusted, but I can follow it down with my hand. Yeah, it's pretty extensive. Feels like it's partially buried on the bottom. Yeah, this piece juts out. I mean, it feels like the shape of a wing. This is an aircraft, Brett. You can feel the fuselage here. It's a plane for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Amazing. Okay, let's keep tracing the edge to see what we find. In the waters off of San Diego, salvage expert Brett Eldridge and I are looking for the wreckage of a top secret aviation prototype that crashed nearby, the only one of its kind still in existence. We found a plane, but is it the plane? I'm following the wing with my hands. It feels pretty compact. I don't know, Brett, a lot of the wing is buried in the sand, but even so, I think this is too small to be our plane. It's not the XP, much smaller, probably a single seater. I think I'm at the lip of the cockpit. Can you feel this? This is where the canopy cover would have attached to the back of the cockpit. It's strange. It gets narrow in the back. Yeah, it tapers. Unique design. I'm trying to get as much footage as I can. Then let's head back up the line and compare notes. Yeah, I'm right behind you, Josh. Whew. Okay, that was uh, a challenge. Epic. Epic. But maybe some of the worst visibility I've ever had on a dive. The only way I knew there was a wreck down there is I smashed into it with my face. Yeah, exactly. But it's definitely a wreck. It's definitely a wreck. You can tell the rust. You can tell the debris. Yeah, it's a plane. Definitely a single engine, yeah? Yeah, for sure. Having said that, I didn't see an engine or a propeller. No, neither did I. But you could tell the shape of the cockpit, right? Yeah, and, it, and, and you were pointing out this kind of the way it seems like it kind of tapered in the back. It goes, goes back to like a little point, right? Yeah, that might be enough diagnostics to figure out what it is. But yeah, we weren't going to be reading serial numbers no, off that. No, no, for sure not. No. <laughs> nobody knows that plane is there. No, nobody. Us and the guy who put it in the drink. Yeah, exactly. So there's a mystery down there. It's not the uh, XP5Y. Not the XP5Y, not big enough. But another story. So should we get out of this water before a gray white shows up? Yeah, let's get out.